Hello and welcome to another Modeling on the Fly video where we once again tackle the Adat Walker from Star Wars. Now, in the last video I was playing around with this guy, which is, it's kind of starting to come along. You can tell what it is and that's uh, always very cool. There's an interesting thing going on here with the smoothing groups that we could take a look at. Let's see here if, uh, if Max will let me select this. Let's hit 4 real quick. And I, I want to hit F4 and just take a look at wireframes. I just have a hard time really looking at polygons if I can't see wireframes. And let's see. Let's just grab all these guys. And we'll come down here to our smoothing groups. Now, how many different groups do we have here? Let's just make that one group only. I should solve that problem. Now, what do you think? Do you think if we really played with that select by angle feature that we could get what it is we're looking for here? Oh, it looks like we have symmetry going on too. And you know what? We don't need symmetry. So let's just convert this all to an editable poly and move on with the rest of our evening. So let's see. Let's hit four. And I just want to try. I love select by angle, but uh, you really kind of have to finesse it sometimes. So this should be a fairly shallow angle. Let's try something like 20 degrees. Oh, look at that. How remarkable. And it looks like we selected through a little bit too, you see over there. But that shouldn't make any difference, not for playing with smoothing groups. Okay, so that should solve that problem. And up here as well. Could just say clear all and put them all on number one. And I think that'll solve all that. Okay, so now we get uh, this... Uh, the funny little, uh, you know, I don't know, the banding or ridges that run along the inside of the neck. Now, this is this should be really, really easy to model. And I looked at, at one photo, you know, it looks like there's about 60 of them, and one it looks like there's about half as many. So, you know, use your judgment. Don't worry too much about it either way. Now, this is still a cylinder. So what I would do is I would take the height segments, and I would drop those all the way down to one, and uh, let's see, from there we could just go ahead and right click, convert this over to an editable poly, jump over to edges, grab U, and do an edge ring, come over here to connect, and then play with our segments. So, I mean, there's 30 segments, and that looks, you know, pretty good, I suppose. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's mm, hang on. Let me undo that. Let's pull that down. I just want to try something. I don't know if this is going to work or if it's going to do what I want it to, but I'm going to try. Let's try putting that at about 20. And then let's try chamfering that. Like so. Like okay. Now let's get out of our editable poly mode. I'm going to grab this whole thing and we'll slide it forward just so I can uh, see the whole thing. And you know what? I just hit the F key. Uh, don't ever hit the F key because that, um, yeah, well, it takes you to uh, the front viewport. And we don't want the front viewport. What we're going to do is hit the Z key. Okay, so let's see. Let's grab edges and I want to get this edge, let me hit Q to get my little widget out of the way without really turning it off. And we're going to just step all the way down through here, grabbing edges. That's probably pretty good. I don't think we need anything else than that. And uh, let's see. Well, you know what? I'm going to invert that. Okay. No, we, we won't. That'd be, that'd be too much of a pain. Never mind what I just said. Ignore what I just said, even. All right, let's switch this over to a ring and uh, control click on faces, and that was just marvelous. So now let's do a bevel, and, you know, I think we should keep it just like that. I think that's perfect. Wow. That's crazy. I wonder why he ended up going in a different direction. No, I don't care. Uh, let's go out by polygon. I'm sorry, by local normal. Excuse me. And then let's just right click and kill all these down. And we'll bring our height inward just a bit, and bring our outline amount inward just a bit as well. 
and click OK, and get out, and there we go. So now we just slide this guy back in here where he was, and doo -doo 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 -doo, we've got this nice ridge neck. We can hit F4 and get an idea of what that looks like. And, and you could decide if that was, you know, enough ridges, if that was too many, too few, and of course you could uh, make adjustments accordingly, like just undo that and maybe um, divide it up a few more times. I think that's going to more than get the job done in our case. So let's do an auto smooth. 45 is probably a little too high, so let's try something like 20 degrees and just test that. That will probably work. Keeps things nice and round and we can see what's going on there. So there is our neck piece and I think that looks pretty good. Now moving right along I would like to go ahead and start working on uh, the top of the troop area and you know just try to kind of start to get that ironed out but it occurs to me that we haven't really done anything with the back section yet and before we do symmetry and create the entire top surface that we're going to be modeling we really kind of need to wrap this up. So let's shift directions and let's take a look back here at the rear of the troop carrier. Yeah, I think we that's actually not a bad picture to start from. I thought I found a better one a second ago. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Isn't that great? Those are like the same photo and it just shows you what different lighting can make. Okay, so let's see here. If I wanted to just start off, let's jump over here to the side view. And uh, let's see, let's hit F3. And grab my layers menu. If I bring my image planes up, and I'm more curious than anything else, what happens if we just kind of take a look through here? Do we get any indication of where that plate is? We get a little bit. You can kind of sort of see it there. And it pretty much coincides with what you see in the picture. So we can it looks like we can still get away with using that as a guide uh, without getting ourselves into too much trouble if we do it. So let's try that. Let's grab this piece here. And I'm going to begin by grabbing the cut tool. And here's how we're going to do this. We're going to make a cut here. Straight down like so. In fact, that's already not exactly what I want. And don't hit control alt z because you've been using photoshop all day that's bad so this is great when you use so many different applications that you just can't keep track of what hockey goes where that's when you know you've done it all right and uh, you probably hold down shift on that one and then go up a little and then shift again and i think this ends right about here i'm gonna go ahead and and pretend that it does try to parallel that edge on the far end and as soon as I'm satisfied with that we're gonna take a look at our picture again yeah it looks like it ends pretty much right where I thought it did okay groovy now let's get back over here to perspective let's shade everything back up wow that that transparency looks so much better than it used to way back in the day just kinda makes me happy alright let's hit F4 so we can kinda see this new sort of panel thing that we've created and uh, let's, if I was going to do this, I would probably grab polygons, get this guy here. And I don't, I don't really want to make an extrusion because in the end I would like this to be a separate piece entirely. But I want that extrusion kind of motion. So let's just make an extrusion for now. And that's a little thick for me. I'll go by local normal. Wow, that's crazy. Do I have more than one face? Oh, it probably just doesn't like it because of that uh, that shape there. Yeah, it really doesn't like that shape. That's okay. We're just trying to get something to get started anyway. So get something that's about the thickness that you want. Click OK. And then we could just hold down Shift and nudge this a little bit. We'll clone this to an object, and I won't worry about naming it because all of our names are pretty much uh, crazy right now anyways. Now, I'm just going to nuke faces like crazy. Just nuking like mad. Kablam. Kablam again. 
again, and then even this guy will just also kill that. Uh, let's go to borders, select this border, and uh, really, I just wanted, oh, I gotcha, fantastic. All right, well, we can do that too. Let's just go to polygons. And let's see, don't we have... There's all sorts of different ways we could do this. We'll just pull out a random sheet, switch over to vertices, and let me just grab target weld. You go up there. You go down. Erg. You. We actually lost him, didn't we? All right. Right click, snap to pivots, and actually, let's see, snap to vertices, that'll be great, and we'll turn off grid points. Now, also, we need to go to customize, uh, preferences, gizmos, move in screen space, because I like that guy. Just snap him. Oh, snapped to totally the wrong direction. I must think we're trying to move. Ah, gotcha. Options, use axis constraints, use axis center as start snap point. We don't need axis constraints right now. You know, that feature wasn't there way back in the day. That's when I officially decided that I didn't like snaps in Max, and it took me a long time to come to grips with the fact that they had changed anything and be willing to accept them again. There was counseling. It, uh, it was rough. Okay, so that's all looking good. We now have this separate plate, which is kind of doing some cool stuff. Now, I'm going to take this plate, and let's drop on the do 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 shell modifier and we don't want to do an uh, an outer amount at all we want to do an inner amount and we'll just push this in i guess probably about like so and then we can just you know shove this back up against the uh the surface or we could leave it out and actually go in that far what do you think let me take a look real quick how far out did we go here cuz we want to keep it fairly similar yeah, it might work. Uh, let's get out of here. Let's grab the move tool, and we could just slide this in a little. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm going to do something a little strange here. Uh, we're going to select this guy. If Max will be kind about selections. I love Max's selections. And let's hit 4. Let's grab 4. Oh, yeah, okay. We'll convert this over to an editable poly. Now we'll hit 4. We get our polygons here. Let's extrude this. And it doesn't really matter the direction. I just want this to stay planar up here. The rest is pretty much irrelevant. And we're not going to have much of an extrusion height. Just enough to kind of get us started. And the reason we're doing that is so that we get some sort of protrusion out the top, like so. And then here in the side view, we could, we could probably move this in the side view. I'd really... I'd really rather not. We could, though. We could just do that, and then come over here and hit 4, uh, grab faces, and make sure that we click Make Planar. Shouldn't uh, change the geometry too much. And gives us a nice flat, nice flat surface from which we can begin working. Now, this guy's not quite as planar as he could be. We'd like him to kind of match up with this uh, plane here. So what I would do probably just to kind of cheat and get it done uh, more quickly is just kind of grab that. We'd probably just pull it straight up and get something close. Because we're going to end up chamfering this anyway to round things out. And that's actually really close. It Close enough anyway. Okay, so now let's take a look at our photo again. So we've got the basic shape of the plate in place. We haven't beveled anything or chamfering. I will I'll refer to chamfering as beveling a lot. It's a it's a problem of using so many different applications. Now we've got 
these guys here, these funny inventions that we made, uh, that you know do repeat all over the place on this thing, and we're going to end up having to create them in a fashion that's almost similar to how they were made on the real model. Um, well, at least if the model was made in anything that was remotely like clay. Uh, so let's see, let's go over to, to polygons, and what I want to do is just see if we can get a nice selection angle that'll help me just get those inner polygons. It's not too bad. Now let's just pull those out, clone those to an object, and I'm not too worried about what they call that object. And let's get out of here, select this new object by itself. We'll grab the element and we will flip it. If we can find our flip, there it is. Clink, there we go. And we'll hit three, we'll grab this guy and we'll cap it. And we'll do the same back here too. I'm going to hit 4. Let's grab this guy by himself. And we'll just kind of stretch this out just a little bit. So it's got the same basic shape, maybe just a little bit different, but not significantly. Now let's jump over here to our side view. Let's shade everything down a little. Do we get to even get to see where these are in this? And the answer is no, not really. So we're going to have to kind of make it up. There's one up here and then three more kind of across the way. We could just assume that they're all pretty much uh, level, you know, just moving straight back uh, in what is the x-axis in this particular case. So Now it looks, as I make a user view there, like our pivot point is a little bit, well, it's a little bit in space. So let's fix that real quick. Effect pivot only, center to object, switch that off. And everybody's happy. Do, 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 do. All right, we could probably assume that this is one of those guys. This funny little dark spot on the, the image plane. We could probably assume that. And then, if we take a look at our picture, we could just, you know, drag back. You could kind of line it up on the inside of this angle here. Say that it kind of hits the first one, and there's one shortly after that. So let's just do that. So we'll shift drag and line one up at about here, and that's fine. Shift drag another, and that's okay. And then it looks like we have one more back here toward the back, so we'll just shift drag that and click OK. Okay, so awesome. Let's come in here, and I'm going to just try a quick attach. All right, and again with the user view, nice work. Let's shade everything up. Slide these back. Now, we got to be a little bit careful with how we do this. So let's just hit 5 so we can switch over to elements. And push this guy in about as far as he'll go. Push this guy in about as far as he'll go. There's literally like we're going to be making indentions in clay. And shove that in. Okay, great. Now let's grab this piece and let's just try this out. This should work. Uh, we'll go over to compound objects, pro boolean, uh, start picking, and click this guy, and there we go. So it looks like that chops that right out, and I'm sure we have some cleanup to do after something like that. So let's right click, uh, convert back over to an editable poly, which does some weird stuff. Uh, nothing that I think is too crazy. We don't have any more of those to make, though, fortunately. We just have these funny things that we can duplicate because we've already made several of those. So no worries there. Let's go to a side view, and uh, let me grab the cut tool. There's no reason you couldn't use the slice plane, but to me the slice plane requires a lot more work than this guy. Oh, look at that. That's nice. It really, really, really doesn't like it when we do that. Okay, so let's fly in here, get a little closer, and we'll just try tricking it. That's awesome. All right. 
So maybe we end up using a slice plane, you know? <laughs> if you can't get the look you want with the tools you have, use another tool. Alright. So let's see here. Let's grab our rotation. This is set to negative 90 and 90. Let's just zero everything out real quick. See what we get. Okay. Now let's take our... Nice. All right, well, let's just pull it out to a spot which doesn't give us crazy amounts of grief. Do we have any, is there any way this is going to get in the way? Possibly right there. So that is going to need to be kind of tighter than it is. So what we need to do <clears throat> is uh, go in here and clean up some of these vertices before we start chopping and anything else. Because that's what the big anomalies like that are telling you, that you've got some really wacky stuff going on with vertices here. And uh, that's Ben. He's just saying hi. Uh, ben, I am recording a Max at at just so you know. And uh, go ahead and quit that for now. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. And uh, let's see here. Let's. Ooh, 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 ooh. You see this? I didn't even notice this. This, I suppose, is why you should check your booleans. Um, let's start stepping back through our undos. Okay, gotcha. It looks like when we just did that split. So before we even add that cut, we need to come in here and just check our vertices. So I'm going to just start off at vertex level. It looks like we have the wrong object selected. Thank you. Come to vertex. Subscribe you. Ah! So we have some extra verts we can remove. So some backspace some backspace. Uh, that guy will, well, let's try target weld on that one. So you go up there and right click. This guy goes away. This guy goes away. This one goes away. They get really tight and really close together, but you know, the verts that stay together. I keep hitting F. Would somebody please come over here? Anybody will do. And just smack my hand every time I hit the F key. Uh, this is an open call to anybody watching this video. You can come out to the 3D Buzz Cave, and anytime you see me using 3ds Max, so I reach for the F key, I'm going to give you a wooden ruler, and you're just going to smack the the daylight out of the back of my hand. Just whap! Just so you know. Goodness gracious. It's great, though. If you don't already use several different 3D applications, you should definitely try. It can be a lot of fun. And not just because you can't remember where anything goes. There's a lot of other reasons, too, why it's very fun. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can always do your um, funny chamfering test to see. And I'll just try to do this one. What happens if we do a loop? It doesn't loop, but sometimes they, they don't, so... Now, the reason I didn't just go with it right then was because it probably had a whole bunch of other edges chamfered, and I just don't want to risk anything. Like, you know, random instability because you had too much stuff selected when you tried to do a modeling operation. You've been there. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. We can cancel that. We don't want to do the chamfer right now, but that does tell us that everything is, uh, is doing as it should do. Okay, zooming in and taking care of our next set of stuff... We start to zoom out a little, and time to start killing out vertices yet again. So backspace, backspace, backspace. It's, you're like the vertex sniper. I mean, isn't it cool? You got like your little crosshair, and it's just like, I have the target. Take the shot. It's fun, you know? I don't know, I have to play little games like that with myself. Otherwise, the tedium of playing 3D Connect the Dots kind of gets to you after a while. All right, how are we doing here? It looks like that needs to go, and this needs to go. Excellent. And that all looks good, and I mean, that's connected to some weird stuff, but we'll deal with that later. Right now, I'm just worried about getting rid of all of these extra vertices, because extra vertices are bad. All right, blam, 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 blam. Ooh, that's... I'm going to get in and really kind of see this one. I think that's the bad guy. 
like that scene on Invader Zim. There's the the guy who disagrees with the tallest for whatever reason. They're like, get him and throw him out the airlock. And they throw the wrong dude out. And he goes, well, that was the wrong guy, but I think everyone gets the point. <laughs> Sorry, I'm amusing myself. That's what happens. All right, boom and boom and uh, one more. Blam. Okay, good. Excellent. Now, next, last one. You know, it almost never fails. Anytime anybody ever says the phrase, last one, especially if they mean it, you know, in that sort of sense, I always hear John Connor in Terminator 2 when they're in the police car trying to get away from the T-1000 and he was reloading the the guns for everybody in the back of the car. Was, last one! Okay, Sorry. I hope you guys don't mind it if I ramble. I mean, I'm going to do it anyway, whether it annoys you or not. I can't help it. Ah, uh, okay, wait a minute. I just used the cut tool. Anybody want to try to tell me why I did that? Kablam! Excellent. All right. Now, back to vertex sniping. Ooh, a challenge. We're going to put our scope on high zoom. At least you don't have to lead your target or anything fun like that. All right, sweet. Okay, so we've got everything, or at least I think it should be everything ironed out. We should probably do a quick check and see if anyone explodes on the uh, on the old chamfer test. So, quick chamfer test. Oh, look, we have explosions. Actually, no, those are going along edges. So those will probably be a, you know, generally okay, though I should kind of give those a, a second glance. Yeah, it should be all right. It's just because those long uh, polygons there. All right, well, let's assume that everything is okay for now. Just so that we can kind of get a move on. I want to take... I guess we could do it with this one that's already kind of connected. It shouldn't make any difference. I want to grab um, vertices. Let's grab the cut tool. Tink. And I want to cut it to the same vertex on the opposite side. I think that's the same vertex. Looks good. And again, just straight across. Tink. And once again, tink. And one more time. Now, let's see if we can do that one once more over here too. And then, hopefully, that should do a nice kind of, uh, <clears throat> a nice kind of anchoring. So that we can start removing some of these excess edges and really start cleaning this up. Jump over here to vertices, grab this little extra vert, and kill it. Okay, groovy. Now, with that done, you would think that we could grab, say, the cut tool, jump into vertex mode, and make some sort of marvelous cut straight across without blowing anything up and then another marvelous cut that goes all the way back you'd think we could do that and it looks like we can it looks like nothing went awry which is awesome so now let's go ahead and just section off each one of these little holes so that we can anchor them down just like we did before and we'll go ahead and put a split in between these guys and then we'll anchor this guy off and we'll anchor this guy off and then it's really just going to be a story of coming in here and cleaning these up. I am going to remove this edge for now. Don't need it or want it. Let's go ahead and remove this one too. Uh, jump back into vertices, though we could do this in uh, edge just as easily. And let's just do a quick anchoring. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to kill him first. Now, blam. 
Let's split that guy out to here. It looks like I missed that. Did you see that? Always watch the shape of your cross here and you won't run into problems like I just ran into. So there's one anchored. Let's come over to the next one. I think that's a little bit of a different pattern than what I did before, but it shouldn't make that much of a difference. Okay, something weird just happened there when I tried to cut. What is that all about? Now let's get out of here and get over to perspective view real quick so I can get a better shot. Do I have any excess vertices there that I should know about? Okay. I guess we'll know in a second when we try to chamfer whether or not what just happened is evidence of a problem. like I missed one down there. It's okay, I'll target weld it here in just a second. No worries. Okay, and we'll do a quick target weld here to here, and I think that solves that. Okay, now everybody should be anchored. Let's grab this edge and just see about a loop. It looks like it loops just fine. So I guess we should go ahead and just try a chamfer. Yeah, it looks good. Also looking good. As well. And last one hopefully will be just as good. Nice. Okay, so now we could hit F4 and just have a quick look at our work. And we've got our plate started and we've got the initial holes in it just like what we see in the actual model. And we're at about 35 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I would like to thank all of our 3D Buzz members, especially our member sponsors, 
who make training like this possible for everybody, so make sure you thank them. I also do want to remind you that uh, if you'd like to become a member sponsor, we are currently streaming a large selection of our available purchase library to member sponsors. So if you want to go check that out, you can jump over to 3dbuzz.com, take a look at the front page, and a lot of the products that you might have been thinking about buying, you can now stream for a member sponsorship. So thank you all very much, and I will see you on the next Modeling on the Fly. Take care.